few games have made me feel like I was peering into the future like Command & Conquer did in 1995. My next door neighbor invited me over to show off the CD-ROM Wonder, the very first real-time strategy game I'd ever played. From the rippling Westwood Studios logo to the rollerbladers chugging what looks like motor oil, to the infectiously catchy music, to the pre-rendered 3D units, it was an overload of visual candy, a new benchmark in gaming showmanship. It succeeds in a lot of the ways that Donkey Kong Country did on the Super Nintendo. They're both very precise statements about the possibility of graphics and visual presentation during the mid-90s when 3D rendered computer animation was getting much cheaper and easier to produce and storage was getting big enough to contain it. Command & Conquer shipped on two CDs. Donkey Kong Country was one of the largest games on the Super Nintendo. Electronic Arts gave the series a first decade bundle in 2005 and it was a pretty deluxe kit, including some behind the scenes features and retrospectives. Plus, it had an insert with the half dozen CD keys you needed to get the games to work, so that was great. For Command & Conquer's 25th anniversary, I was very surprised that EA went all out to remaster the presentation for 4K, including entirely redone high resolution artwork and units, remastered cutscenes, and recomposed music by original musician Frank Klepacki, as well as tons and tons of bonus features dug out from the Westwood archives. On top of that, they didn't just remaster the original game, but its 1996 spin-off Red Alert, which is the first game in the series I owned, and one I'm actually more familiar with. For the sake of focus, I'm doing separate videos for both games because I believe both deserve their own time in the sun. So how did this all come to be? For a lot of people, including myself, Command & Conquer was probably their first Westwood game, which made the 10th anniversary placard that the logo dissolves to very... strange. Well, maybe that was just me. I remember my dad playing Dune 2, kind of known as the granddaddy of the real-time strategy genre, but CNC was all mine. Virgin Games, yes, that Virgin, bought Westwood in 1992, and the first two CNC games were published on the Virgin Interactive label. In 1998, Electronic Arts bought Westwood Studios and the original studio we essentially had one more hit in them, which was 1999's long-awaited CNC sequel Tiberian Sun, before they were gently guided behind the barn as their other non-CNC games failed to chart. Westwood's Western studio was rebranded as Electronic Arts Los Angeles, and the Las Vegas studio was shuttered in 2003. Even in the late 90s, Electronic Arts was notorious for absorbing and destroying beloved developers, and in writing this review, I'm reminded that as a freshman in high school, it was my dream to get my animation degree and move to Las Vegas to work at Westwood. Well, thanks for killing my future, Electronic Arts, you dicks. It's somewhat poignant and yet strangely fitting then that this loving remaster was assigned to and assembled by Las Vegas-based Petroglyph, the developer formed by Westwood alumni, a lot of whom worked on the original game. Anyway, Command & Conquer. First off, this remaster faithfully recreates the original mind-blowing MS-DOS installer when you boot it up for the first time. Before Windows 95 standardized software installs into boring ass wizards, Command & Conquer had crap flying all over the place. Disembodied robot arms holding up design elements and all kinds of crazy stuff. I got a laugh out of it as it skips right past the sound card setup. DirectX and Windows really did make life easier for PC gamers even if we did get to miss out on cool stuff like this. The game takes place in the modern world of 1995 after a parasitic crystalline alien plant thing crash lands on Earth that we name Tiberia. When harvested, its crystals are extremely valuable, allowing you to build up your army, but Tiberium itself is very toxic. Keeping your infantry away from the stuff on the battlefield is vital, which is an awesome little gameplay wrinkle. This game is the first of the CNC Tiberium series and known officially slash unofficially as Command & Conquer Tiberian Dawn. Tiberium is designed to terraform the Earth into something habitable for, you know, aliens, something this game strongly hints at, while wisely saving the full reveal for its sequels. You assume the role of an unseen and unheard battlefield commander, which is, you know, you the player, the person sitting behind the monitor glass, and all of your handlers speak directly to you, which became a series trademark. Competing for the Dominion of the World and its wealthy Tiberium is the UN-funded Global Defense Initiative, or GDI, and the quasi-terrorist, quasi-religious group Brotherhood of Nod, led by the enigmatic Kane, the series' most iconic character. Kane is portrayed by Joe Kukan, who also directed the full motion video segments. The campaigns are linear and not terribly long, but they do offer variable missions from time to time. 
They're also designed in such a way that you can tackle either one first, rather than one leading into another, although that means that there's a lot of redundant storytelling between the two. Command & Conquer isn't just a fun game to play, it puts on a show, and that's a huge reason why the series is endeared after all of these years. Or at least, these first few games. From its strong introduction, to its sleek visual style, to the cutscenes that bookend nearly every mission, the game is this strong mid-90s effort to put you in the center of a highly interactive and epic Hollywood action flick. Long before developers were building mocap rooms in their studios, Westwood had its own production studio with green screen and a 50 computer render farm that made the creation of the game's plentiful cutscenes possible. After all these years, Command & Conquer is still an enjoyable hyper-capitalist real-time strategy game. You buy buildings and units, you spend money to repair them when they're damaged, and you can sell structures when you need the cash, which is actually a critical component in one mission. You build bases that animate out of the ground in really freaking cool ways, then manufacture an army and send it off to smash your enemy's base. But sometimes you don't build a base. Sometimes you have to capture someone else's base and make it your own first. Sometimes you play as a single elite commando. Those times are not the greatest. The game's interface originally consisted of two scrolling columns for structures and units respectively. It was mostly effective for the time, but you could only build one infantry or vehicle unit or structure at a time, meaning that building an army involved a lot of UI babysitting. The remaster provides some fixes by placing structures, infantry vehicles, and special attacks in separate tabs, and by allowing you to queue up units, which is incredible. The remaster also adds key bindings, which is a mixed blessing because you can only use them when that tab is active, which requires you to use your mouse, since the tabs have no key bindings of their own. So why not just use your mouse at that point? As someone who keeps his hand on the left side of the keyboard for RTSs, having some of these buildings and unit bindings on the right side just makes it more work than it's actually worth. Do you like moving units and attacking enemies with your right mouse button instead of the left? Well, the remaster gives you the option to do that too. Man & Conquer, for all its charms, is not as strong a strategy game as its Blizzard contemporaries, and a lot of it has to do with its balance, or lack thereof. One point where the game stopped me cold was that GDI Commando mission where you need to demolish a network of anti-aircraft sites. You can easily one-shot infantry from a distance, but you're especially vulnerable if they're right next to you, which happens when demolishing structures because the game will spawn 0-2 to two enemies from it, which will get a few free shots on your commando before you can respond. This makes your success in this mission based almost entirely on RNG. Playing as Nod, it's fun as hell when the infantry force you start a mission with is quickly, completely, and randomly annihilated by an A-10 firebomb airstrike you have no defense against. Neat. Being able to run over enemy infantry with vehicles is an interesting mechanic that the AI is much better than you at. Your entire force can be destroyed with the single move of an enemy tank. Being able to select as many units as you'd like to move around and destroy with, compared to the 9-12 to 12 unit restrictions of its Blizzard contemporaries, means that battles funnel you into building the largest murder ball you can and then forcing it on the enemy stronghold. The game's primitive pathfinding can be downright infuriating at times, as moving units between points will sometimes send them the long way around, even through the middle of an enemy base, rather than just having them chill out for a second while a bottleneck clears. One last gripe here, I can't tell you how many missions devolve into finding the enemy's last standing structure before the mission can end. Here's a hint though, it's almost all of them. In Halo Anniversary style, you can switch between the game's original graphics and its crisp high definition ones with the tap of the spacebar. I think it's bigger than a gimmick because sometimes I want to go back to the game I played in the 90s and other times I want to play this classic strategy game that's been scaled to modern displays. Frank Lepaki's recompositions of the original game's classic electronic tunes are okay, but they don't augment the catchiness or freshness of the original songs, they just don't scratch the same itch. The game gives you the option to play these remasters or the 1995 originals or include tracks that didn't even make the game originally. The last point I want to touch on in this remaster are the cinematics, because getting those right was mandatory for a remaster. Unfortunately, there were no high definition versions of these cinematics in the Westwood archives, so the only assets they had to work with were the original substandard definition cutscenes and the green screened dailies, which make up the bulk of this remaster's special content. I can understand why EA didn't want to spend the money to just redo the cutscenes in a style that mimicked the lower fidelity models, animations, and special effects of the original game, so instead they turned to the nascent field of AI resampling. 
This example that EA provided is from Red Alert, but you get the idea of how much heavy lifting computers had to do. The results overall, unfortunately, are mixed. It's clear that EA and Petroglyph rebuilt a couple of the cutscenes anyway because they're some of the first that you see, but the results are incredibly inconsistent. Some cutscenes look great, a lot look okay, and some just look like hyper-compressed undulating mud. Just throw all of the cutscenes in the AI up converter, they said. And yet when different cutscenes use the same clip, one time it looks crisp, the other time it doesn't, even though it's the exact same clip. In fact, the better looking one is even covered in a layer of static and a GDI emblem. And then there's this text. This is seriously 5x5 five five grid based glyphs with a gradient on them. It would have taken an artist half a day to redo this element instead of leaving it a blurry mess. Not a critique per se, but I'd love to ask Joe Kukan about this particular performance. You might create a little guerrilla diversion along the way just in case some of the naughties don't get the message. Just enough to cover me until I get into range of their power base. Then all you have to do is sit back and watch the fireworks as my team shows them what kick ass is really all about. Right around. In the end though, this is a great remaster. Yes, Command and Conquer as a game is a flawed masterpiece. Yes, this is a flawed remaster of a flawed masterpiece. But for fans of the series, it's an incredible, loving effort that serves as an excellent springboard for new players as well. For $30, the price is absolutely right, and it's got plenty of real-time strategy for everyone. Kane lives, y'all. Just a programming note here, next week's video, which is normally scheduled on Thursday, uh, I'm trying to get that done as early in the week as possible because it's a very special week for me and the video is about a very special game for me and it's going to be a very special video for you. So uh, stay tuned. Don't be alarmed if you don't see a video next Thursday. You will have one. So get the popcorn ready and all that good stuff. It would be quite a shame if you didn't. Are you playing Command & Conquer Remastered right now? Hey, how about you leave a comment down below? That'd be great. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe down here. Hit that notification bell. You've already made this far. You might as well just do it. It's great. It's amazing. Don't forget the conversation continues on Discord and Reddit and Facebook and Twitter. And hey, I'll see you next time. Pew!